today we are going to discuss um, something I call it the elephant in the room and we have Dr. Nair here who is of course a very very successful neurologist and we are, I am grateful to be able to snatch a few moments with Dr. Nair to actually give us a perspective on what I call the elephant in the room. Now what is what am I talking about? Everyone knows I talk about eat more vegetables, eat more colors, eat more fruit, eat more nuts. I am all for a plant-based diet. I think it is excellent. We should be aware of it. But I also want to create an awareness about one aspect of our diet that is protein deficiency right, right? protein deficiency is an aspect uh, or a part of our diet uh, not many people want to discuss yep. you know mm -hmm. and uh, we talk about eating plants we talk about vegans we talk about vegetarians and it's all good but having a protein deficiency in my opinion is as bad as not eating enough fruit and vegetable in your diet. Very true. Uh, Pramila, first of all, thanks for having me uh, on this little chat with you. It's always a great pleasure to discuss with you because I really appreciate the practical tips that you give out and I have benefited immensely from uh, the, the lifestyle tips that you've always shared. Very practical, easy to do. You have nailed this right. Uh, the elephant in the room is protein deficiency. Uh, if you look out at people uh, who are educated and a little health aware, Everyone knows about the importance of including, you know, fresh produce, fruits, vegetables, different colors. But very few people are aware of the implications, the extent, in fact, of the uh, of protein deficiency in our diet. Just to give you a few numbers uh, so that, you know, we can start thinking about this objectively. Uh, from the time I went to medical school up until now, it's been several years. Uh, the World Health Organization has continuously revised the recommendations for the daily uh, dietary allowance of protein and this is very important to know because protein is not stored in our body unlike fat and we need to consume uh, protein for our day-to-day -day requirements on a daily basis so from 0.6 gram uh, per kilogram body weight when i went to medical school to 1.2 gram per kilogram body weight right now you know the recommendations have nearly doubled in the last few years well i don't want to get into the semantics of why that's happened there's a lot but the point is uh, we need a lot more than we are getting. Now, if you look at a good Indian vegetarian diet, you know, with milk products, with pulses and all of that, uh, you typically end up with about 20 to 25 grams a day. And if you're a, you have a good Indian non-vegetarian diet with animal protein, two to three servings per day, you probably end up with 35 or maximum 40 grams of protein a day. Just do the math. An average Indian 60 kgs body weight requires at least 70 grams of protein Whichever way you look at it, we're at least 50% or more deficient. I've seen with like uh, minerals and vitamin deficiencies, uh, it shows up quite quickly. But what's the story about like having a protein deficiency and not really knowing it for a long, long time? So, Pramila, that's a very relevant question you ask because micronutrient deficiencies, as you correctly pointed out, for example, vitamin C, scurvy, it's just a few months. So you can't miss it for too long. But with protein deficiency, the story is entirely different. You can be protein deficient for decades and you may not suffer any immediate symptoms. And, and that's the reason why you encounter a lot of health aware people who say we're completely okay. I mean, our protein deficiency, we don't suffer from protein deficiency. That's the argument. I get this a lot of the time. And when I speak to a person who suffered a stroke or a heart attack or when you one of those catastrophic life health conditions, it's problems that have started two decades ago that has precipitated, you know, the, the catastrophe. So it's not something that happens overnight. And why do I highlight protein deficiency here? There is a strong connection with, you know, protein deficiency and a lot of lifestyle diseases that we're seeing today. India is today, uh, you know, hit by a tsunami of lifestyle diseases, uh, starting from high blood pressure, diabetes, very early heart attacks and strokes, cancer, arthritis. 
all of this in one way or the other is connected to visceral obesity that we of South Asian origin are particularly prone to and uh, you know that is closely connected to chronic protein deficiency. So chronic protein deficiency has a strong association with visceral obesity, with accelerated aging, with a lot of pro-inflammatory states within the body that includes uh, you know a predisposition to diabetes, heart attacks, strokes, cancer, arthritis, you name it. If you want to talk about the one thing uh, you know that we can really sort of modify with phenomenal benefits for the future i think it is addressing the state of protein deficiency in our diets wow i mean i meet so many people um, um, about you know about health and uh, just general nutrition and a lot of people are aware like they are they are exercising some of them are runners some of them you know walk some of them do strength training very seldom I can actually see somebody who's having enough protein. I struggle myself, yeah. you know. Yep. At 50 kilos, I struggle to get 70 to 80 grams of protein every single day. So it's not something that will happen without a conscious, like I call it mindful. Yep. Right? You have Very to true. make a conscious effort. Now, mind you, if you're watching me for the first time or you're a follower, I am not saying. This is not a debate about is veg being vegetarian good or e eating non-vegetarian, is veganism good. This is not a debate. I am not propagating that you start eating meat or you start eating eggs. All I'm trying to do right now with a very expert perspective from Dr. Nair is if we are aware of this protein deficiency, we will be much fitter in the future much healthier in the future i mean i read somewhere recently our muscle is like an organ yep. it's an organ it is an organ it's yeah. an organ a muscle i mean as a layman i look at a heart as an organ my heart my liver my kidney as an organ and if you tell me as a doctor your liver is deteriorating i will panic yeah. or your heart is deteriorating it's it's shrinking I will panic, but when my when I'm having muscle loss, when I'm my muscle is deteriorating because of a lack of protein in my everyday diet, like you rightfully said, correctly said, the body doesn't store protein. We need water and protein on an everyday basis True. for the body to be hydrated and for the body to have enough protein. So. I mean, we're not talking about building muscle. I mean, if you are going to the gym, you need protein. If you have a sedentary lifestyle, if you're sitting all day, you need protein. True. Because protein is not reserved for people who are exercising. Protein is for everybody who has muscles, we all do. And the muscle is an organ that after the age of 35, you can yep. correct me if I'm y wrong. You're right, you're absolutely right. Starts to deteriorate, yep. right? And most of us are just completely unaware of it. Yep. You know, we look at our fat and we want to lose it. But very few of us are mindful of our muscle deteriorating. Can you give us a perspective? What happens to our body in the long run? I mean, I look at elderly people by the age of 60, 65, they have weak bodies. I mean, is it related to muscle loss? This is a very important question you asked, Pramila. There's a lot of interesting research which shows that uh, one of the key uh, uh, factors that produce disability as you grow older is a condition called debility. We call it debility because people lose their strength and their stamina. And this is closely connected with what we call age-associated sarcopenia. Now, I'll, I'll just uh, explain that a little bit. As you grow older, as Pramila just pointed out, especially over the age of 35, there is a tendency to lose muscle mass. And a very small factor of this is connected to aging. The majority of this is related to lack of exercise and a faulty diet. So, especially here in, 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 in India, uh, because of our, uh, you know, certain practices that we have with our diet and our lifestyle, uh, lack of exercise, as I just said, and protein deficiency, this age-associated muscle mass loss is very, very rapid. And we've also found that for a senior, 
the risk of falling and the risk of dying because of a lifestyle associated condition increases by a factor of five to four times you know five to four times from the baseline simply if you have uh, you know lost muscle mass over the age of 35 and once again as you correctly pointed out uh, protein deficiency or protein supplementation I would say is not something for people who are interested in building muscle mass yes if you are interested in gaining muscle mass you need a lot more 1.8 to 2 or even 2.2 gram per kilogram body weight is a recommendation for a person who's athletic and wants to actually enhance his or her muscle mass but if you're just interested in maintenance you need at least 1.2 gram you know per kilogram body weight and this will ensure that your bones are strong your muscles are strong your risk of falling and your risk of lifestyle diseases is all taken care of as you grow older so you know I, I hope that answers your question we all understand protein in a broad sense um, but we know that uh, some proteins like dal like dal is a, say, a source of protein but it doesn't have the nine essential amino acids if this video is helpful hit the share button and share it with a friend